All right, back with another D5 tutorial. This time it's cameras. Is a camera the most important thing in a rendering? Yes, because it is what you see. We're gonna take a deep dive into D5 cameras and all the settings. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so here we are in D5. Now, let's talk first about the mouse controls. So the default mouse controls, they actually match Rhino, which is pretty awesome. So the right, the right mouse button is orbiting and then shift and the right mouse button is panning and then the scroll wheel will zoom in and out. What different types of way can you navigate? So in the top right of the viewport, we have camera and we have display and then we have um, an actual navigation pull down. We're going to start with the navigation pull down. So there you'll find orbit, which is the default, which I just explained. Then you'll find fly, which is a little bit different in the way that it moves around. So you got to just kind of get used to which one you like. My personal preference is orbit. And then you have walk. So maybe if you're familiar with some other, um, other, other software, some of these might make some sense to you. So walk, walk put me right down on the groundscape which i is okay but i i feel a little uncomfortable down here because i want to i want to orbit up away so i can't do that in the walk mode but i can do it in the orbit mode i can quickly pan down and kind of get away from the groundscape so yeah, I would just say experiment with those and you know find what your personal preference is, orbit, fly, or walk, and then there's some settings um, below for each one. And then under camera, that's where we have a whole lot of settings. And before we get into each one, I just want to orbit down. So that would be my my suggestion is you you know you kind of get. Um, Get something similar or or you know something you have in mind for a camera like I want a low eye level shot here <laughs> we got a ton of uh, effects we have another video coming where we can look at all these different effects but right now it's raining and misting which is pretty cool um, so you want to get I'm gonna turn off some of these effects so bear with me for one second okay so I'm, you know, kind of around the position I want to be. So that's one way. The other way is to um, get in the position like we are, make a, make a scene, and then edit that camera, like actually select the object to edit it, which, which is really great to be able to do. So I'm just going to go to here, and I'm going to click on Add Scene. And I'm going to rename this scene. So it does take all the settings, okay? So like the, the environment, the sunlight, the HDRI, the daylight, it records all that. So if you change it, you just gotta remember to click here on these double arrow um, to update the scene. But there's this tool here called Edit Camera, which is really cool. All right, so a couple things that I had to do to be able to see that camera. There's a, if you scroll to the very top of the menu on the right, there is a Activate. So it activates and it allows you to see the camera and then it gives you like a picture in picture so that you can see what you're looking at through the camera, small little picture by picture there. Um, but I can see the actual camera object. So this is great because then I can, you know, I can take it, I can raise it up, I can move it over. So I'm actually physically controlling the camera, which is, you know, going to be really important for animation. But the reason I'm showing it in this video, which is not about animation, is because the height is really important. I want to set the height of that camera. And you can see I, I have some XYZ locations. Now, I set the units to be uh, imperial, to be feet and inches. Typically, this is metric. So where did I do that? I went to the three bars uh, in the top left. And I went down to preference and in preference I have model unit and I set that to inch okay it doesn't there's still gonna be some things in meters it doesn't change everything to inches I wish it, I wish it did but here you can change uh, your model units so this way when I type in 
I'm going to type in, let's say, 5 feet, which is 60. So that's going to give me a lower camera. You can see that in the in the viewport there. So that that's one great reason to bring up the camera. Um, let's also look at the camera settings back here. Okay, so there's exposure if you want to make it more exposed, if you want to overexpose it. Um, there is what what is called FOV, field of view. So um, the lower the millimeter is, the higher the angle. So I, I got, I've gotten so used to doing the millimeters uh, from other software that I came from, because I'll typically do a 20 millimeter, which is about an 84 degree camera angle, and you see that updating there. Uh, let's, let's actually look through the camera. Okay, so now we're looking through the camera. And I'm going to pan over just a little bit. Okay, I'm panning over. The height has been changed. The other thing that I can change is that I can make it a two-point, which straightens the walls. So you're not getting a three-point. If you look up at a building, the three-point perspective is really pronounced because the walls start to tilt in, which you don't want. If your walls are starting to tilt in, I'm just seeing if I can uh, take off. I'm going to put it on perspective and see if I can get, you know, where I'm look really looking up. It's not a tall building, so I'm really not getting that to happen. But if you get that to happen where the walls are tilting in, you can choose two-point perspective. Okay, I can still do my height back here at 60. Okay, some good things with camera. Let's keep moving. So we've added a scene. And I've made some updates. So I want to click the two arrows to update the scene. That's, that's really important. You want to do that. The next thing with the camera that's really important um, is the depth of field. Depth of field can make a rendering very dynamic when you do depth of field. What it does is it allows you to focus on an area in the rendering, and then the rest of it is out of focus. So let's take a look at that. So on my right toolbar, if I scroll down, there's a depth of field, and I can turn it on. And then there's a set focus. I can turn that on as well. And I can click a point. I haven't gotten great results with clicking a point. Uh, I just haven't. Uh, you want to put the blur all the way up to begin with so that you can actually see it happen. So I haven't had good, um, good results with that. But I have setting the focus distance. So I'm going to uncheck fo follow focus. I'm unchecking follow focus and I'm clicking on focus distance. So this is a distance away from the camera. I'm going to make my blur 10. So I'm going to set this, I'm not really getting that to update in real time. Maybe I need to let the graphics card catch up. So the hairs, this is not in inches. It's in, it's in meters. So I'm going to set, I'm going to set it to two a distance of two and what that's going to do is that's going to start to blur uh, the building and the background okay I switched to a scene that I already had I I was changing the background and some of the lighting and things like that um, I would say the only thing left to look at with a camera is if you want to do a clipping a clipping of that camera so a lot of people do rendered sections and this isn't the greatest uh, camera angle for that, but it's pretty easy. It's set to zero by default and you can you can change that All right, let's render it out. And let's take a look at it. So that brings us to the the image Which goes along with camera. So I'm going to move my myself out of the way But just some things are repeated. Here's our field of view. Here's our focal length Then we have the aspect ratio ratio which we can you know choose different aspect ratios then we have our preset size what size are we going to render out it i'm going to render out at 2k and if you're going to render out channels you're going to do channels i have a lot of videos to look at all these settings um, so make sure you check out this d5 playlist but let's render this out okay some things i really like about it is i like the way that the pavers and the foreground are really in focus and you could imagine setting up you know you know some furniture maybe a fire uh, you know, it's people sitting around a fire or something like that, like in the in the front, in the foreground, and then having the building, um, you know, with the depth of field and having the building kind of blurry in the background. All right, that's a quick video on cameras. 
Check out the D5 playlist and I'll see you on the next one.